Hello and welcome to the CFC Talk podcast. And tonight we are going to be discussing one of the most important things this, this season, Brighton versus Chelsea, the first game tomorrow that's going to happen. And we are, of course, pre-recording this. So if you guys have seen the results from the game fixtures on Saturday or even Sunday, then lucky you. But we can't discuss anything about that in this podcast. But firstly, we've got a guest with us. We've got Jam from SW6. Hello and welcome, Jam. How's it going, boys? You good? It, it's, it's, I mean, since Kai Havertz news, I think everyone's fine. I think any, any problem in life, we look at Chelsea squad and we say we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is it. I mean, God, we've we've had some blessings this transfer window, haven't we? Um, back to back to two thousand and four vibes. Um, but yeah, no, all oh, give thanks. I'm glad to be on it. Thanks for having me. It, it's nice to have you here, and hopefully, we're going to have a very good discussion about the match preview and everything, and then getting your opinions on Chelsea and Chelsea's kits and the players that you want to sell. But before that, the usual co-hosts of these podcasts, Amart and Alex. Hello, Mark. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. Hello, Alex. Oh, yeah, great to be on again. It's always enjoyed being on this podcast and it, it'll never get old. I love love talking with you guys on, on all things Chelsea. The, the best part about this is, is if you if you guys have access to our Discord, then you'll see every year before every recording when we publish the points and everything we say, we're going to have a 35 to 45 minute podcast and then it ends up going longer than usual to about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, so that's always incredible to see, you know, the passion for the club that everyone has. But let's just dive straight into the podcast for today. Um, before we discuss Brighton, some some opinions that we want from Jam as well as from Alex and Iman as well. Um, the kits, Chelsea kits, uh, we saw that Pulisic will be playing in the number 10 now. Um, it's surely an upgrade from William Jam. What do you think about that, you know? How much does it affect uh, Pulisic? You know what? I think he's earned it. Um, it's not that he deserves the number 10. He's earned it. And, uh, you know, he, the end of the season was absolutely mad from him. Um, I think he what he ended up with uh, 11 goals, 10 assists, something like that off the top of my head. Um, this, this guy is absolutely unbelievable. I didn't realise how much of a goal scorer he is. And that's why he earned that number. You know, he's he's a goal scoring number ten. I love to see it. I love Eden Hazard, but you know, sometimes the frustration could be, uh, yeah, you're trying to pass all the time. Why can't you shot and just be greedy? You know, get more goals for yourself. But Christian Pulisic is a goal getter, and he's going to get some goals in that jersey. I can't wait for it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it excites me for him because I think it's a big thing for him. But do you know what? In general, I I play football myself. When it comes to the to the kit numbers, I don't really care. <laughs> I, forgot, I like, forgot to add it to your resume of introduction. I had it written <laughs> down. I just no, uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, I, I I don't really care. I think sometimes there's a big fuss made up about it, but of course you've got you know the commercial implications of it, and now you know the Americans are going to go wild for that. So um, <laughs> when you see it from that point of view, I guess it does have a lot of meaning to it. But for me personally, the traditional numbers have kind of lost their meaning for me um I, I just give me any of those numbers and i'll be happy to play for chelsea my thoughts i mean i think uh, if i'm if i'm going to ask the same question to alex in a while i think all, th- all four of us would love to play for chelsea even if it's <laughs> if it, even if it's the, the the most unluckiest number at chelsea or whatever <laughs> great yeah uh, it, yeah it's I'm more. I'm a little bit superstitious on kit numbers, but yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. It, it's more. I, I think it's more the aesthetic. I don't know. It just ha- seeing Kai Havertz in a twenty-nine. It's just. It's just satisfying. I think. And, what but, would you go for, then, Alex? Sorry, what do you mean? What, what number would you pick then? For for what, what I would pick. Yeah. Uh, se- um, seventeen. Classic Eden Hazard vibes and Co- and Kovacic now. Yeah, I would absolutely absolutely go seventeen. Yeah, it's just ballers but, have 17, I don't know. I think everyone's very happy with the kits and kits numbers and everything, but the third kit, starting with a mark, come on, man. It, like, Do you have anything to say for that? <laughs> the, the third kit design, right? 
it's, it's, I, I would. I, I'm ashamed to call it the third kid. I don't. I. Don't, I I'm, I'm. But the thing. The thing is, let's put it this way. Um, my United third kit has made me feel better about our third kit because <laughs> that zebra, that zebra design, that zebra crossing. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm copying this from uh, Jam. He likes using uh, nicknames. So that zebra crossing. <laughs> <laughs> that zebra crossing Jesse just doesn't fly with me. Our Ted kit, I don't know. Like if they just made it a yellow instead of a red, it would be so good or something. Or maybe a black and a blue or something to work well. But the red and blue, nah, just doesn't work. And even Crystal Palace made fun of us, so we we it just proves that the the kit is horrible. I don't know. Do I don't we... know what I'll get. Usually I get a home Jesse and an and away Jesse. Sometimes I get the Ted Jesse if it's fire, like last season's own was very, very good. But this season, I don't think I'll even go near the Ted mm-hmm. kit. No. Uh, Jam, do you see yourself buying one? Hell no. No <laughs> way. Absolutely not. Nah. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Not for that money. Absolutely no way. No chance in hell. How much do we got? Do we get by if 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 you're given the option of buying a, a Tottenham kit, any any of the that they have, or, or this third kit? I'd buy the Tottenham kit because then I can use it as toilet paper. Sorry, go on. Quite expensive toilet paper, man. <laughs> I'd still prefer it to the third kit. <laughs> <laughs> Their third, they've done a good job, I think, on their third. If only they just took, took the Tottenham badge out and put Chelsea on their yellow third kit. It looks pretty clean. It's just a shame it's got Tottenham on it. So, yeah, that automatically defaults it to toilet paper. So, yeah, it's a shame. I think Nike has, has done us uh, the worst in, in, in the form of looking at everyone's kits. I think Nike's just given zero attention to Chelsea's colours and Chelsea's kits at all, especially the third one. I mean, the, the first and the second kit look amazing. You know what? I've actually got a bit of a a fact, though. When you actually look back and go a bit more, you know, past the 90s, red used to feature quite a lot for Chelsea. Yeah. Um, It's it's not unheard of for Chelsea to have, like, even a predominantly red kit, but it just doesn't work with the stripes, man. Come on. We're not Crystal Palace, you know? And, And that jab that they've taken at us just means that we're banter FC every time we lose in that kit this season. You just know it. You can see it coming. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 can, I can already see the memes. Instead of Chelsea, it would be like Crystal Palace 0, and then the other team 1 or something. I think oh, we've yeah. already started that. <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day of someone said um, uh, they posted the results against Crystal Palace in the last three years, and it was Chelsea losing all three. And it was like, if you, if you can't beat them, then join them. And then there was a picture of the third kit, and I was like, okay. We've already begun with everything here. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. We're going to have to face it for the next season. Hopefully we don't see a lot of it. Um, it, it they're saying that we're going to use it for our European um, campaign, but I'm hoping that we, we stick to the first or the second team jersey. Um, but three players, Jam, we, we discussed this um, with other guests as well, and um We'd like to know what three players, or even if I'll give you the freedom of even having more than three players um, that you want Chelsea to sell and, and maybe not see in this red kit. Ooh, yeah. Well, more than three players, that's dangerous. But you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> Number one, numero uno, Emerson Palmieri. This guy needs to go. He, you know, I've said it plenty of times. He's got a better disappearing act than Houdini. This guy, I don't know where he's been this year. Um, he's left his spirit in 2019. He needs to go back and find that. He needs to He needs to get a time machine or something and get that spirit back. Honestly, this man, I, he's supposed to be a fast technical left back that can cross the ball. I just don't see any of it. And when he does have a good performance, the whole team has a good performance. So it's almost, for me, it just feels like he almost hides behind that in a sense. And I might be being a bit too harsh, but... Alonso can attack better than him. At least he pitches him with goals. I do call him the Spanish Homer Simpson because of the way he runs. But at least you know what you get with Alonso. Um, Emerson just offers nothing. And now we have Chilwell. 
I'd much rather have Alonso as a second um, sort of left back to Chilwell uh, than Emerson being anywhere near that team. And if we need to go to a third one, if he's still at the club, Ian Matson, rather whack him in over Emerson right now. Um, next one, right. This guy annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> Antonio Rudiger. I call him <laughs> Bobo the Clown, Doc, any of do we, do we make him the next, um, maybe maybe Marina's assistant uh, after all the help that he's done with the transfers? Yeah, I mean, he'll be more useful there. Um, I uh, Look, okay, come on. I mean, I, I do banter these players. I know that they are, you know, top professionals in that. And Rudiger can throw in a good performance, but I'm just sick and tired of his inconsistencies. Um, you know, I think I lost the plot when I officially lost the plot with Rudiger when we lost 3 2 to West Ham at the London Stadium. And there's a simple corner just before half time, sorry, a simple clearance to make just before half time. And he shanks it on his left foot, slices it out for a corner, then starts smiling at his defenders. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> um, and hustle, hustle, guys, before half time. <laughs> what happened? They score straight away. It's so annoying. And then at the end, when the most, you know, the, the most dangerous left-footed player known to man in the Premier League, flipping Yarmolenko, that's the only thing he could do is cut in on his left foot. You allow him to do that and then dive as if you're trying to save the whole earth from destruction. Like, come on, man. You knew what he was going to do and you let him do it and he's packed us. So, you know, Rudiger, I just can't deal with his inconsistencies. He can't pass he looks awkward i don't even know if he can walk in a straight line anymore i don't know what's happened to him um but yeah he needs to go um the third player mr hologram kepper oh jeez this does he not guy, deserve a chance with this defense so the improvement in defense with silva and and chill well and everyone you know what um i i've backed kepper till the and I'm, when I say I backed him, I mean I I I I didn't really want to criticize him openly too much because I felt that a lot of his uh, the, the goals that we conceded, a lot of people that kind of got annoyed at the, uh, about the goals were actually goals that were you know screamers. They're in a top corner, um, and I backed him until that Liverpool game at Anfield, and then I, I realized at the moment where. The ball got crossed in. I thought Rudiger, of all people, could have cleared it. But instead, he turns and shouts at Kepa, and so did other uh, defenders. And I think that's because they've completely lost faith and confidence in him. He's lost confidence in himself, and it's a negative multiplier effect. I don't see him coming back from this, but I do believe there is a good goalkeeper in there. Um, I think if he were to go back to Spain or to you know another team um, outside of the Premier League with a clean slate, I think he could really show what he's about. So, you know, I just don't think it will work with us because the first mistake he makes next season with the fans back and they'll be all over him and it will just be a negative multiplier again. Um, so I'm going to be fair to Kepa, but, he, you know, he has annoyed me at times. I mean, he also likes doing the mannequin challenge where he just gets stuck in the mud and wait, watch, just watch the ball go in the net. You know, Especially um, against Trent Alexander-Arnold's free kicks. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he packed us Yeah, twice. Um, now, I'm going to throw in another one, and this might spark a little debate, so forgive me if this goes over time. But no Now, I, I think either Ross Barkley or Ruben Loftus-Cheek has got to go, and I'll say why quickly. We just haven't got the space to play those guys will give them game time next season, in my opinion, both of them. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is now 25. He's obviously struggling with injuries, trying to get in his fitness. He's almost a little bit like Emerson, where he ha he's only really shown in pockets what he can do. And it's because he's coming from Cobham that I think we all want him to do well. And I love him. I think he's good. I think he's got great potential, but started to get to squeaky bum time with him. Um, Ross Barkley, on the other hand, he's a limited play in terms of you know what his ceiling is but he's more consistent than Ross Barkley um uh, than than Ruben Loftus-Cheek sorry because he's actually available for most games and you know he has turned up here and there and 
as a manager, you, you're almost thinking, well, I need consistency. Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? What do you boys think? Okay, so something that I get from here is, is you've, looking at previous guests as well, I think, John, you're the first one who's mentioned Ruben Loftus Cheek's name into um, this, this category of selling the players. But um, Alex Samar, um, do you agree with John? Um, with Ruben, I think it's a bit harsh. I think it's a bit harsh to say Ruben needs to go, to be honest. Probably he needs to go on loan again. Because like you said, there's no space for them to get regular minutes to perform. And I think the, the the injury he had was a big blow on him. Big, really, really big blow. And and you you are a player as well, so you can you can probably relate to them. When when they come back from injury, usually there's this psychological effect. Because they've had this injury and it was it nearly ruined their career, they play in a particular way until they get their confidence back. And I feel like Ruben hasn't really got enough games to do that. And he will, not, he will not be able to get enough games next season, let's be honest. Probably in the Carabao Cup or probably in the um, early stages of the FA Cup. But if he wants to get regular gameplay at a high level, it would be harsh to sell him. But I think it would be fair to loan him, uh, like give him a, se- a season-long loan like what we did with um, Ampedu and see what happens on loan. But to... To tell him, I, I'll, I probably won't won't agree on that. But with that Barkley, means... I'm on the same. Barkley, I'm on the same page with you. I, I am. I also chose Barkley. Just going to say one thing quickly. Sorry, um, I meant one of them has to go, not both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so, I, I, so I was just, I was just, um, um giving both of them, mm. like, um, um, kind of like a defense. But Barkley, I'm not giving him a defense. He has to go. <laughs> <laughs> just, just contradicting on what um, Amart said there, and and we, you said loaning Ruben Loftus Cheek. If we loan him out, if I'm not wrong, he'll be 25, 26 when he comes back. Um, and yeah. looking at our at our midfield right now, we've got Kai Havertz, we've got Mason Mount, we've got Kovacic, who's who's going to be good for the next two, three years. Do we want someone back at the club who's only going to be there for another? two, three years, even if he becomes at the level of Mason Mount, Kovacic and and then Havertz and where he has to challenge these guys for the positions and looking at how have the, the, the potential Havertz and Mount have both of them, they're gonna increase their levels. So the competition increases for Lubin Loftus cheek as well. So but is it the right decision to loan him and then get him back at the age of twenty six possibly? Yeah, like um I said um He's a, he's an academy he's an academy project and I think he's one of the people the the players that the club wants to see succeed. So probably selling him wouldn't be like an option for them now. That's why I just threw in the loan the loan move at least to get minutes because um I don't see him getting regular minutes this season. As much as most of us would like him to get minutes, that midfield is packed. It's packed and I don't think he might get regular minutes. Probably my the thing is we 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 right now we are not we've not heard anything about him going alone, right? So the 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 obviously he will stay. So I was saying that it's it's very it will be very interesting to see how Lampard includes him in the squad because we know he will not get the minutes that we all want him to get because that midfield is packed. So yeah, so I'm I'm just hoping to see how Lampard um, includes him in the squad. Continuing this debate, I mean, we've got we've got Jan saying Ruben Loftus Cheek needs to go out. We've got Amar saying that we can maybe loan him out for a year. Um, Alex, maybe you can decide. You can find the the I possible have, solution. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Under, I do get the whole set. Gets one of them has to go because at the end of the day, there's only one real spot for that uh, fourth choice midfielder between Mount. There's Mount Havertz, Kovacic, and then one of Ross or RLC, but at the same time, I would kind of like to keep them both just for the sake of injuries. Uh, I, I personally don't want to see Ross Barkley start a Champions League game ever again, but uh, <laughs> like if if we do get rid of Loftus-Cheek and then, uh, sorry, say we learn Loftus-Cheek and then, we, then Kovacic, for example, gets injured, then Bark- we'll have to use Barkley probably in Premier League games if we have if if we have 
uh, fixtures stack up, and I just think. Well, we have to, we have Angola Conte and and Jorginho. Yeah, that's true, but he, I, they'll play probably. The, this is kind of just talking about the two attacking mid roles, but or maybe the. But won't you have Mount or Kovacic in in the substitution bench? Sorry to interrupt. Him. Yeah, that yeah, you know it's fine. Um, yeah, that is true. It's just to have I think having five midfielders for two spots, and then the third spot is Kante or Jorginho. I think that's that's pretty injury proof. Plus, you have Gilmore coming back, so you'll have Kante, Jorginho, and Gilmore to compete for the holding spot. So, yeah, I, I think having five midfielders for the two attacking mid spots um, is is pretty good actually. Plus, I don't know, maybe it's a sentimental thing. I just think whilst Ross Barkley has, he's very frustrating. His decision making is is very frustrating. In cup games, he just tends to play well. So I, I I don't know. I would keep him. I do feel he can be of use in the cup games. Plus, pre- and what about plus preseason? Ruben Loftus. <laughs> no, uh, and then Loftus Cheek. Ah. Uh, yeah, the injury. I still think he deserves a chance. He's still recovering. Uh, he's been. I think sometimes people forget he's been out for what thirteen months. Or something, or he's not played a played profe- like a, profe- uh, a proper game in thirteen months from his injury until about till the. Well, actually, no, not thirteen. Maybe like twelve or something. Uh, from from the uh, friendly where he got injured to project to the first game of or second game of restart whenever he started again. But yeah, so it's I'm ha- I'm well happy to give. Loftus cheek an extra year just to get back into the things because his injury was awful. So yeah, I, I would still keep Ross and Loftus cheek just for one season, uh, and then uh, sell one of them, probably Barkley. But if Loftus cheek gets another injury or just is playing like he is now, not not that great, then yeah, I'd be tempted to to loan out Loftus cheek. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. So overall, I think I, I think both. Um, just for a year, but just for a year. So so we've got we've got Jam who wants one of them out. Amar says Barkley out. Ruben Loftus Sheik loan. Alex says keep both of them. Maybe use them for cup ties or, or ties against weaker teams. Yeah, sounds about yeah. right. I mean, in my opinion, sell them both. Just, just get rid of them. Sell Loftus Cheek, man. They're coming. They're gonna come for you. The Chelsea okay. Twitter. <laughs> they're coming. For you. I mean, okay, okay. If if I'm if I'm looking at it in a way, we we get ten uh, maximum twenty million off Barkley. We get another. He's a he's a young prospect. Room Loftus Cheek. We get thirty five, forty million off someone. That's sixty million. That's uh, which you can spend. Maybe not this transfer window. Maybe not the winter next next summer if we need a midfielder. And I'm pretty sure you can find a good midfielder for sixty million. Also, yeah, if we if we happen to buy like a uh, rice or something, I guess Kante can then if, if Kante. I, I don't think that like when everyone's fit, you'd imagine Kante would still play. So Kante then can be shifted into one of the a bit further forward if we did buy rice. So, yeah. Do we see Jam this? This could this. Oh, I'll ask you this first. Do we see Kante playing in an attacking role or a midfield uh, in a defensive role this season? You know. Oh, sorry, oh. Go on, go on, Jam. <laughs> um, definitely DM. Definitely DM. Um, I mean, previously when he played um as a DM, it's usually not alone as a lone DM. Um, you know, previously before we got him from when we got him from uh, Leicester, sorry, he was playing next to Drinkwater. Um, you look at him playing for France; he, he's always got a partner. Um, I think in a lone DM role, it's not necessarily a role he specialises in, but he can do it. He can do an effective job, and I think if we're better at sort of retaining possession, um, it, he'll be all right. And I'm not saying that he's weak defensively. That's not what I mean. But, you know, in the ball, on the ball sometimes, I think that's where he kind of struggles a little bit. Sorry, played him almost as a number eight. Um, 
and he showed that he could do it. He could do a decent job for us there. So, you know, that's an option, but I'd prefer him as a DM. And, you know, don't rule out having a double pivot, by the way, under Frank, you know, with the likes of Kai Havertz and, you know, even a Mason Mount can play as a centre attacking mid. That could make it, you know, a Kovacic Kante double pivot sometimes. So, yeah, he's 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 going to be playing uh, certainly deeper in my eyes. What I'm getting from all of this is we've got so many options in midfield at the moment that we can try out a new tactic every single match. If if something doesn't work, we've got something else. If if something doesn't fit right, but Alex, I think you were going to say something um, when I mentioned the fact that. Is is Kante going to play in attacking uh, in an attacking position or a defensive position? No, I was basically going to say something along the lines of what Jam said. As in, I, I kind of for, I don't know. With restart, Frank looked to be moving away from the pivot, but then from what I don't know, some reports that Nizar Kinsella said that he basically had some feeling that Chelsea were going to go with the four two three one this season, or at least start out with it. So who knows? But uh, yeah, like, I agree with Jam. It's uh, I hope we use the pivot more. Um, can... Do we? Do we see three at the back? Uh, no. With three at the back, then you'd only be able to use two. I mean, you get the. You'd only be able to use two midfielders, really. I mean, unless you play Mount on left wing or something. But we only. Re- I think we only played left back. Real. I mean, it played a lot to Alonso's strengths. He's arguably the best left wing back in in football so it did definitely play to his strengths but the chill coming in i'd be surprised but frank's frank's showing he's tact- he's flexible he can play through at the back when when needed so if against for example against sheffield united we shifted to a back three i think halfway through the game or something or no i can't remember we definitely did use three at the back in the game yeah we did we shifted to it you're right yeah yeah so yeah, even though Frank was quite rigid, as in in Project Restart, he tended to he tended to stick with the six and attacking eights, and then when Kante got injured, we went to three at the back. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see three at the back, attacking eights, and the uh, and the four to three one with Kante Kovacic double pivot. No, I think that that should close the debate. You know, for the three players that we have to sell. Um, before this, before the transfer window ends, but the most important, um, the most important discussion of this podcast would be Chelsea versus Brighton tomorrow. Kickoff happens. Chelsea, there's a chance we may win the league, and there's a chance we may compete. But what formation are we starting tomorrow, guys? Who? Um, yeah, I'll take a crack at this one. <laughs> Um, out. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, we've um, we've obviously got a few players injured that are, that are ruled out. Um, you know, Hakim Ziyech, uh, Ben Chilwell. Um, I don't know if Reese is fit. Um, Thiago Silva might not be ready. Um, Kai Havertz has been declared fit and ready to go. Uh, which is a massive, massive, massive boost. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, in in terms of the shape, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna be a four three three because we haven't had time to work on the four two three one. I think um, why I say that is because uh, there'll be a lot of emphasis on that on the centre attacking mid to to track back defensively. And I think it's easier to do it in a three. I think coming into a new team, you want to get that chemistry uh, before maybe changing a formation that could affect everyone else. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll say four, three, three, definitely. Um, but, cool, I'll just start in line-up. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I've been thinking about this all day. I think we're going to have Olivier Giroud start up front, Timo Werner left wing, um, Callum really? Hudson Odoi right wing, yeah, and Kai Havertz behind them because we're playing against the Brighton team, two big centre backs, um, and I think they're pretty good at set pieces too, which we're weak at. So we're going to want Giroud for that defensively, but also offensively, you know, he's good at holding up the ball. He can link up very, very well. 
And I think that could work quite well with Kai Havertz and, and even Werner, you know, sneaking in off the Giroud flick. So, yeah, um, I'd say that, at least up front. Um, Amart, sorry to keep you in the dark for such a long time. Do you agree with that formation, 4-3-3? Yeah, like 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 you said, I was also I was also thinking about it today, and yeah, I I also went to the four three three. I I don't know whether I don't think um, Lampard will start with the three at the back against Brighton, so I'm pretty sure he might go with the four three. And as for the 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 team, I'm not I'm not all that sure, but I know ZS we will not have ZS around, so probably his position. Pulisic is fit, right? He was declared fit today, right? Yes, so, he was. He was, but I don't think he's going to get a full game. So maybe we might see him come off the bench. But we we can discuss that late, a bit later because I'm going to get get you guys to maybe say one player from each position that you would like to um, see start. But at the moment, just for the formation, you would also go for four three three. Then yeah, yeah, with the formation, I think four three three will be the best to go against to play against Brighton. Um, yeah. So yeah, also go with four three three. Alex. Yeah, I, th- I I do think so. I mean, uh, I can't remember if in the Brighton in the Brighton game we started with we did the Kante Kova pivot, I think. Yeah. But with Kova out, uh, I don't know. I I don't like I don't like. I'm not a fan of playing Jorginho whenever Kovacic can't be played next to him. So he's he probably won't start. And yeah, so the four and Kante. I mean, I can't remember Kante being played in a pivot with anyone else other than Kovacic or Jorginho. So yeah, it's going to have to be the four three three, and then hopefully have it start. Please, <laughs> why not? All right, so we'll, we'll go through with that. So let, to quickly just go through the lineup, so we can discuss a bit of the tactics. If everyone can just, um, as soon as I say a position, if you can just say one player that you would like to see in that position play, and then we can get it, we can get a lineup or a predicted lineup. Um, so for goalkeeper, Jam. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's my friend, isn't it? Kepper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. I mean, come on, look, being realistic, it's the start of a new season. Maybe he's had the chance. He didn't finish the end of last season, but. You know, maybe he's had a chance to really like reflect, come back strong. He he started off against Brighton in the friendly, um, and I uh, yeah, I, I'll just go with Kepa. Caballero annoys me as well, by the way, but I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> you might just have a separate episode on Caballero and Kepa then. Oh, I'll go on for days, mate. Be- <laughs> we might have to get you back on on, on mid season, maybe by December, and just compare them both. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> um, Alex and Mark, um, same, same. Wait, yeah, just I, I think... Sorry? Are we saying just predicting the goalkeeper? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Amart, yeah, I think... do you want to go? Oh, sorry, yeah. I, took, I cut you off. No problem. I, I think um, Kepa. Kepa is the only option now. Uh, Mendy, I don't know whether Mendy comes in or not. I don't know. But I think Kepa... I don't know. Um, Kepa used Kepa. Um, um, how does it say? It? He's good when we start the season. When we start the season with, like, expectations on him to do well, he might he might give us like one or two performances and probably go back, um, full Houdini. So, <laughs> uh, we could yeah. Kepa Kepa will be the one. I don't know whether Cavalero will start. I'm not sure Cavalero will start. Um, Kepa will definitely be in goal for us. Hopefully he does well, and hopefully that defense is able to protect him. Maybe we can see a clean sheet coming, but Alex, same same option, or or are you going to be the only one to pick Cavier? I would pick Kepa, but I just I don't know. I just don't think Frank really trusts him. So I think uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if Frank picked Willie. Uh, yeah, I would go Cavalera just to be less be different, <laughs> uh, but. I hope Kepa starts. Kepa does it before Mendy gets, or, or presumably if Mendy comes, uh, before Mendy gets settled in. I really hope Kepa has a chance to show that with with this new, with I mean, yeah, 
you, you'd like to think oh, Kepa needs a chance with this new look defence, but the defence is going to look be looking pretty much exactly the same because Chilwell isn't there. Thiago Silva won't probably... Oh, I doubt Thiago Silva will play. So it's still the same defence. Um, so I'm not sure if the result will be any different, but I'm all for giving Kepa an opportunity to get his confidence up. Okay, I mean, seems pretty easy option. I mean, Kepa um, takes that goalkeeper position overall. Um, right back, just quickly, Jam, Amar, Alex, one person. It has to be James. Right back has to be James. Yep. Yeah, no one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Reese James, if he's fit, otherwise, um, Cesar's for the Greta. Do we not see the captain playing the first game of the season? We do. I think I think I think he 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 will play in um, left back. I put him at left back, and then James at right back. Yeah. Everyone everyone agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alonso just can't play. Uh, I don't like Alonso playing in the back four. <laughs> although it, post in in restart he he did do it a couple of times, and I thought he was actually he did do okay in some games. Although against in our losses he was pretty awful. But yeah, I uh, don't want to take the risk and. As Peter left back, you don't want Tarek Lamptey running at Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. How, how... That's oh, game over. Well, that would be an interesting watch, though. <laughs> this... I mean, you, you never know. You never know. We, we might see Alonso do that. You know, football's a very tricky game. You can't, uh, you can never predict it to the pinpoint. But the two centre backs, the partnership of centre backs, which uh, two are we going to pick out of everyone that we've got? I don't think Thiago Silva will be available, but there's a chance people are saying he came in today. Today, is it? Is it um, Thursday or Friday? I mean, uh, um, and then uh, there were rumours that he might play or he might get selected. But Alex, starting with you. Who have you got in your know, two centre back positions? Uh, I think the first one, I think everyone will pick Zuma. And oh, yeah, Christensen. Christensen actually, he played okay against England yesterday. And uh, whilst at the same t- he has his faults, as does Rudiger, uh, yeah, it's, it's got to be Christensen. I, I, I don't like how Rudiger is still at the club, but kind of. <laughs> Seems like he can't really be sold because of the part he's played. Uh, the part he's played in uh, in the transfers. Whilst I think everyone wants him to go, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think he'll be sold. So yeah, Christensen and Zuma. I think with the confidence that um, Jam had um, placing Rudiger in one of the three or four players that he mentioned to get out of the club, a kick out. Um, I think Jam, you'd, you'd go for the same partnership, or are you going to include Thiago Silva in there? Oh, I can't get my hopes up with Thiago Silva. I'm going to go for a team that I think Frank will pick um, or a team that's realistic to. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think he lost his faith in Christensen. So, big Kurt Zuma, the black Gandalf. Yeah, he's going to be back again. Um, unfortunately, next to him is going to be Dr. Hustle. He is going to start. Let's be real. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Hustle is going to stick with me. It's going to stick. <laughs> yeah. I just replaced, uh, when we, uh, if we do any graphics um, for, for lineups, we might just have these names at the bracket, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we might have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm your you're two center backs. Yeah, yeah. Um... I would have I would have gone with Christensen initially, but uh, um, considering that uh, Rudiger's um, two projects that will, will probably be starting, I think it's fair he starts with them, Kai and Werner. <laughs> He's starting with his German boy, so I'll I'll pick him and Zuma. Zuma is a must. He's very strong. He 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 impressed a lot last season when he played. Rudiger, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, with the guy of Christensen, I love Christensen. I I I know I I believe Christensen is a good defender, but I think he's not fit for the Premier League. He can, 
he can do well in another league, but well, the Premier League he might not. He did well against. He did well for Denmark, the Nations League. He did very very well. But I don't know. He has been going to do well. He, when he goes on um, international break, does pretty well. Comes back to Chelsea, then he just goes back into the the skin that he left behind. So I don't. I I, I I'm. I'm I'm picking Rudiger and Zuma. No, All right. I mean, no. we're pretty much um, got we've got one player in every position. Um, the three center mids that's the tricky one with so many options. We've had quite a bit of a debate about this just before this. Um, who are we? Who are we picking? Um, let's start with Amart this time. Yeah, the three midfielders. I might. I might go for Kante, Havertz, and Mount. Um, Kante as a DM, and Havertz next to him, Mount next to him. Kante, when Kante plays, he he makes like he he adds as like a third, like a fit um defender. He plays like a fit defender, more or less when it's when it's in DM. So he he makes that defense stronger. No matter who plays there, he makes them stronger. Any mistake that they do, he picks it up. So definitely Kante is starting. And then he's um, I'm picking Mount and Havertz. I, I I love Kovacic, but prefer Mount. I I think Mount is Mount has the attacking threat. At the same time he can defend and he's very hard working. But with Kovacic, he can dribble, he can defend, but the attacking threat is just not there. Um he can't give the um um uh, defense splitting pass. Or he can't even score a goal. Last season he scored two wonderful goals, but this season I I don't see, that. like I don't think he has it in him. But Mount do Mount does. So with Mount and Havertz playing next to um, Kante, we have the attacking threat. At the same time, we have players who can hold the ball in the midfield, and we have Kante who can help the defense at the same time. So I'm going with Kante, Havertz, and Mount. Just to change up the flow over there. Is it just me or everyone's getting goosebumps listening to this lineup? <laughs> Because <laughs> I literally feel like it's kick off in about ten minutes. <laughs> That's so true, man. It's you know we we need we need um I almost feel like you know those uh, entries uh, in WWE where they <laughs> they just come sprinting. <laughs> I feel like we're doing that with every player. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I, think, I think the NBA does that as well, so maybe we can have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> But Jam, you're your three your three midfielders for tomorrow. Yeah, I agree with Amma actually. Um, yeah, Kante Havertz. No, I don't agree. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I ah oh, no. You know what? I I feel like Brighton have a really progressive. Um, I mean, they 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 they. Lineup's quite structured. Their midfield's quite solid. I know they've lost Aaron Moy, um, but I'm almost tempted to go with Kovacic, Kante in the DM, and um, Havertz as um, another as a sort of number eight too. I feel like Kovacic is a bit of a blend of both, so I'd rather go with that. To be fair, Mount could come off the bench. That makes sense. I mean, there's a possibility that we could see that, but very strong votes to Havertz and Kante, and then. Um, I don't know what Alex says. Alex, uh, what are you going to say? Yeah, I mean, I what the, the, the three midfield three that I would hope, sorry, that I th- yeah, that I would hope would happen would be the ones that Jamal, uh, sorry, Jam, Jam and um, wait, did Amart did Amart say the same lineup as same three as Jam? No, yeah. I think Amart mentioned the only difference that they had was um, Amart Mount. picked Mount. And Jam Jam picked uh, Kovacic, while uh, both of them had Kante and Havertz as their other two centermates. Yeah, yeah um, so you are you are the tiebreaker. <laughs> 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 I mean, it might be evens because whilst I personally I would prefer if Kovacic played over Mount, but I do think that Lampard will probably go with uh, go with Mount just simply because of the nature of the game. It's we're going to have most of the ball. We want probably I don't know playing Mount instead of Kovacic would probably be a bit more we. A bit more attacking threat from the midfield, so yeah, I'm gonna. Go, I, I want Kovacic to play with Kante and Havertz, but I do think Lampard would probably go with 
with Mount. But if you had to pick one out of pick, then I'm going with Mount simply because uh, it's uh, it's more it's more attacking, it's more exciting. I've always, well, I mean, I think a lot of people are looking forward to seeing the two attacking eights in Mount and Havertz with Kante at the back. So yeah, it's more exciting. So, but then again, no disrespect to Kovacic, he's a amazing player and he's equally he's also a very exciting player. So uh, for 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 the more got for, I don't know for the more end products, which <laughs> sorry we're gonna need in this game. Yeah, I'll go with Mount. All right, that makes sense again. So we've got Kante, Havertz, and Mount as a majority in, in, in the in the middle three. But the front three, the main front three, we've got quite a lot of injuries. So maybe we won't have our best front three out there tomorrow. Um, but Jam, what's your, what's your front three? Well, it's a chance for Starboy to to show what he can do. Um, I I really really want this guy to do well this season. He's got to take it by the hall by the horns. Um, if you like, um, Callum Hudson Odoi, um, right wing. He ha- he has to start this season on fire if he wants to get good game time. Um, I'm going Olivier Giroud up front because he can link the play up, um, and I feel like Timo Werner can get in off a flick from him um, on the left wing. So yeah, I'm going Hudson Odoi right wing, Giroud up front, uh, Timo Werner left wing. Be back. Sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, you wouldn't believe. Um, I just got a message from Alex Goldberg asking me to be in the pod. <laughs> oh wow! Nice. <laughs> looks like jam, looks jam, like jam, we're... jam. You're doing big things. Big things. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking mad. I think, um, I, I think. I think when I followed you, at the time I started following you, were at I think seven hundred, eight hundred um, followers. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and now you're 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 getting called by the man himself, Alex. <laughs> Man's made it, <laughs> guys. He's made it. He's we made it. He's made, made it before Alex Goldberg did. Fellas, I've always got time for you. you, you I'm, I'll be more than happy to come back whenever. I love what you guys do. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to leave this part into the podcast. You know. It's, <laughs> Just... oh, no. Better. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> We're the reason Jam is getting called into other podcasts. That's us put it that way. But but going back to the lineup, um, I think it was Alex. Um, your front three then. Yeah, t- uh, Giroud does make a lot of sense. Uh, Although Hudson Doy had a good game for the England under 21s, so I hope he plays. So yeah, uh, Hudson Doy right wing, um, and then who else have we got? Is fit? Uh, so since Ziyech isn't available, uh, yeah, it's got to be Giroud up top and then Werner on on my left. Don't think it's it can be really any other way unless Pulisic is somehow magically fit to start or uh yeah yeah it has to be Giroud up top and then ta- uh, all right so unanimous decision up front but uh, I'm all, um oh there's yeah, no point asking I, you your front three but there's one question that I would like to ask you do you see Tammy Abraham starting over Giroud he he was he was actually in my front my front three. There you go. He was. So I I had two options for front three. Um, first, if um, Werner plays on left, I believe Tammy play as our striker, and then Callum has an order who play on the right. That was the first one I went for. And the second one was assuming Christian um is fit, assuming Christian is fit and he can start, um he will play on the left, and then Werner as a striker. And then um, Callum has another on the right. But if he's not fit, then I think Tommy will start. I think Tommy will start. I don't know. I feel like Tommy will start. Probably Giroud might start ahead of him, but I prefer, I prefer Tommy to start in the first game. And then um, Callum on the right, Werner on the left. Hopefully we get a goal from Werner. Yeah, so 
looking at the lineup as I've got here. So if I'm if I just repeat it one more time, we've we've all got out of unanimous decision, Kepa in goal, James at right back, Zuma and Rudiger in the centre back positions with Aspi on the left, and Gola Conte, Havertz and Mason Mount start in the middle three, and then Werner, Olivier Giroud and Callum Hudson Doyle. But there is I mean, the, 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 Amart wanted Tammy to start. Um, I think it was Jam who said Kovacic over Mount. And then you've got Alex who said um, Andreas Christensen. So if I'm looking at this lineup, and, and I'll ask you guys as well, it's not the best lineup that we've got, but is this a start of something very good? Is this the start of a new era at, era at Chelsea? It's a very yeah, it's 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 a good start for sure. It's it's a it's a fresh line. I mean, I just can't wait to see Kai Havertz play. Uh, and yeah, it's 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 a good start. The the lineup is gonna just it's gonna look even more FIFA career mode over the next four weeks. And yeah, it's so exciting. It's yeah, I can't wait yeah. for my. Jam, uh, I know we've got a very young squad, but this is a just a question that popped up on my head, and I think you you can answer this one. Um, there was a time where the opponents would already be scared to face Chelsea because they would look at the lineup and they would read players like Peter Cech. They would learn, uh, read about John Terry, Frank Lampard, um, Didier Drogba, Michael Balak, uh, Torres. If you want to count him in that, <laughs> but. Does this Chelsea squad really bring up that um, that same vibe from that that era where where we won the Champions League, the Premier League, and all that, all of those trophies, the golden Chelsea era, if you want to call that? Good question. Um, I'm going to say not yet because you've got other bigger beasts um, in the north of the country. You've got Liverpool and Man City, um, and you know those players they're carrying. Uh, a reputation from last year's Premier League. And a lot of these teams are going to be thinking, um, you know, Christ, last time we played these guys, they whipped our asses. But the players that we've brought in, they need to prove that they are the real deal. They need to start this season, you know, not necessarily the first game, not the second game, but as a team, we need to start decently. We need to start getting the goals, you know, um, we need to show what we're about, play with pace, play, you know, be able to break down a low block. We need to be going into the fifth, sixth game, you know, in the top three at least, you know, within one point of the winner, if not uh, the, the leader, sorry, if not leading the table. And then that's when you start to build up a reputation where you start to become well respected, like the likes of Lampard, Terry, Balak, Drogba, all of these guys that you mentioned. They only had that reputation because they were winners. And they scared the the the, cr the crap out of these guys, uh, you know, because of previous games they played against them. So we need to earn that reputation. Someone like Pulisic might carry it now a little bit, um, but who else? Maybe Kante. You know, you you wouldn't want to dribble past him. Yeah, you, you've heard you've heard Werner getting however many goals in the Bundesliga, but that pre Premier League arrogance is gonna carry most of these guys through and they're going to think like we can play against Vernon to start with until he scores five goals you know um so we'll get there that's the short answer <laughs> hopefully we do i mean every chelsea fan would love to see it um we're coming to a close into the podcast but just before we get into some of the personal stuff that you do um on on sw6 and everything if you don't mind answering them a bit later but your predictions if you can just give me a short prediction on on, on your champions on the, on how our champions league premier league the fa cup and then the, uh, the carabao cup um what are we looking forward to in these in these competitions um, that, was, sorry, was, sorry was, was that for me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so i'm sorry um okay so all comps if i if i start the premier league um I think we, you know, the aim is to finish within 10 points of the eventual winner. I don't think our aim is to go out there and win it this season. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but at the we same time, we, we do have a chance. And I'll, I'll tell you why, actually, because 
There's no way on this earth that Liverpool are going to get 99 points or more. There isn't. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the 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 start of this next season compared to the end of this season, the season's been compressed. So, you know, we're playing a lot more midweek games. You know, it's going Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. You need a bigger squad. Liverpool don't have that. They've rode their luck last season with their front three not picking up many injuries. And I just don't see that happening. They're going to have to rotate for to keep things fresh. So I see them dropping points. Man City are a bit of an unknown entity. Um, I feel like they could probably get more points than they did last season. But, you know, I see Chelsea getting at least 80 points plus, And that is enough to win a Premier League. But whether it is with those two, I don't know. Um, but I do think we'll finish within 10 points of the league winner, if it's not us. Uh, Carabao Cup, we should be going all guns blazing to win that and get a confidence boost, get Lampard's first trophy. That is a must. I, you know, I'd even play a strong team. I really would. Um, FA Cup, we can see how that goes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily focus too much on that. We saw what happened this last season that's just gone by. But we should be aiming to get to the semi-finals at the very least. Um, to to be completely honest, uh, hopefully with a bit of luck we can get there. Um, now the Champions League. We just can't have Ross Bartley taking a penalty against Valencia, can we? <laughs> um, that's what ended us giving us buying in the last 16. And we, we just can't afford to get a massive team like that. We need to make our own luck. So I would say we'll probably get to the quarterfinals at the very least. Um, then it just depends on who we're going to get. And I think we'll take that as a minimum, to be honest. I asked this question to, to one of the guests um, on the previous episodes. Um, do you do you what where would you prefer in the Champions League? We get to the semi final defeat by Bayern, let's say the same way we got defeated this season, or go out in the in the round of eight, um with the respect of let's say going down going out by one goal against a respective team. Sorry, could you repeat that? I didn't I didn't um, what I was asking was, if I give you a scenario, Jam, that um, would you rather have Chelsea get knocked out in the semi-final against mm-hmm. um, and have the same performance as we did against Bayern or or any club, um, the same way we had against Bayern this season, or do we do would you rather have us get knocked out in the round of eight or round of sixteen mm-hmm. um, and, and play um, attacking football and football, which is very good to see, and maybe just go out by one goal or or, or just even away goals I think we with with a young team we need to be getting the right style of play in place you know you look at how Klopp started with Liverpool um, and they got their asses handed to them a few times but now look at them um, sometimes in order to get success you need to know what failure is um, and that couldn't be more true in football you know you, you need to know what losing is like which is why I'm not so gutted about losing the FA Cup final last season I think if that were to happen, I'd rather we play the right football and go out in the quarterfinals, you know, to one goal. Um, knowing that with a young squad, it will build up into something beautiful sometime soon. Hopefully it does. Um, I think that wraps up everything for this podcast, except that we, um, I wanted to do this uh, segment with Jen and then I'll have I might and Alex's input on this as well. Um, Amar, you, you are the media manager of SW6. One of the biggest responsibilities, I would say, in my opinion, you manage every all of the content that's posted across all platforms. Um, you, you, you're handling everything and the way you handle um, schedules and everything. How important is it um, if, if there's, there's a viewer watching this um, passionate about Chelsea or any club, as a matter of fact, how mm. does how did they get their start and how did they build an audience like SW6 or as you've got built over the years? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, to, to be completely honest with you, SW6 has actually only been running for just about a year. Um, I got involved around sort of April time. Um, and, um, you know, during lockdown, it became sort of exponential growth. Um, I think what the, the, the good thing of SW6 is what we do is, our content's quite unique, so it's unique in a sense that I can't really 
see any other channels that do things the way we do with the consistency that we do it. You know, there's uh, two or three edits going out each day. Um, you will get passionate videos, you know, that are quite consistent within the styles going out at least once or twice a week, um, you know. Um, and if you have games, there's always videos going out. Um, I think we're, we're quite balanced, yet you'll always get our opinions in there. You know, um, you will know what people are thinking, but you'll still hear the whole story. Um, so I think, you know, if, if I was to give any advice to anyone, it's to be consistent. Just because you get one like or one post doesn't mean that you should stop there and get frustrated. You know, it's a long road at the end of the day and someone out there is going to like your work. And, you know, all you need is one lucky retweet from a big account because of, you know, your good work and um, your consistency. And then, the, you know, you probably pick up a good few followers and you just pick up from there. It gets exponential. So you just have to keep at it. Keep consistent. You know, review your own work. Be really critical. Be self-critical. I mean, is what I mean. Uh, but take it all on board and, you know, just be better for the next time and keep going at it. And, you know, eventually you'll get there. A lot of the people um, think that, and, and I would consider myself, because I, I, I used to upload videos on YouTube. And, and a lot of the people that I know, or, or if some, someone comes to me and asks me for advice, even though this is mm -hmm. a very new project and anything, um, a lot of the people expect to make a lot of money because we we have this perception of YouTubers being very rich. But when you're doing something like this with such a big team that SW6 has, and not just SW6, we look at other Chelsea or even AFT, um, also on TV or maybe Blue Sound TV. Mm -hmm. Do you have to sometimes say, at the moment, money is not uh, not expecting? not expecting to make any money or probably create content that people like than something that people don't enjoy but i would get money out of it or get monetary value yeah yeah that's a, that's a good question i mean um i think for, to do anything like this you need to be passionate about it first of all um without that passion i don't think you could ever get the the good quality work that people would want to pay for um or, or you know even not pay for directly but just see or give you views kind of thing or give you likes um if what you if you're good at what you do and the passion comes through then that will you you could probably latch onto an opportunity further down the line i don't think you should ever come into something like this looking for money um but you know it's if the opportunity presents itself it would be down to your hard work and your passion that's got you that opportunity and then you know from that point you do with it what you will um but i don't think you could just go right i'm going to make money from this because that's going to be two years of hard work before you can even think about doing that if that makes sense yeah um which is why i think a lot of the people just give up you know it's, it's that period of uh of the beginning where you have all, you have to start from zero to let's say five six seven hundred followers in a, in, a, in a year or so and with sw6 as you mentioned there's been an exponential growth um within a year you're all, it's you guys are almost about to hit uh, ten thousand uh, followers and but you guys deserve a lot more but um let's now shift over to us as a podcast and, and this is where alex and amar i think you guys can have your uh, you can have your input as well um this is uh, something that would be advice for us three if you if you want to give us three advice you know this is only a story this is only like the certain great podcast we've done so as as of us we've got editors on board we've got hosts we've got uh, um, graphic designers and everyone on board what would you give an advice to some to a podcast like us to help us grow in the next year or, or maybe by december yeah um keep doing what you're doing boys um you're gonna you, you might have obstacles thrown in your path um but you know rather than stop at the obstacle point at it and start shouting and complaining jump over it and just keep going and going and going and going and eventually you get to where you need to be so what i'm saying in other words is it's all about your consistency it's all about you know um giving each other 
constructive criticism and being able to take that on board, knowing that together you're going to get to to where you want to be. Um, I I think you know you just want to keep up to date with all your relevant topics and content and you know trending news and all of that kind of stuff. You know it's things that you guys know, but there is no cheat code. It's just all about that hard work and dedication and passion. Um, and there will be people out there that like what you do and you know once you've got your fan base you you do want to keep putting out content for those fans you know it's you, you can't please everyone and I think we, we all need to kind of remember that sometimes it's impossible to do that so you know do what you keep finding fun keep doing that and then eventually you'll get to where you need to be that's what I'd say Alex and mine, if you have any questions not really, no. I, but I do found I do find that what you've just said is, yeah, it's so I can definitely take that to heart. And it's like in the next couple of weeks, when I, I think I'm going to have university, I think in a couple of weeks start up again. So there's much more. It's going from pretty much no commitments right now, just kind of stuck in lockdown, to kind of work and social commitments coming in. But I've got to just try and make sure that. Just stay, stay, just keep at it, stay committed. And I think, yeah, what you just said is, uh, it's inspiring in a way. Yeah, I think it's inspiring, and we'll definitely try and and take it to heart. Trust me, me trying to juggle all of this with a full time job as well. I work eight thirty to five thirty, and it's tough. But you just got to be organised, lads. Um, and then, then it's manageable. I think I might can relate to your situation as well. He's, 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 he has quite long shifts of work and then he gets home and thankfully, and, and I appreciate the fact that he has the energy to get on and talk about Chelsea for, for another hour with us and everything and then help plan out everything as well. So um, I might, if you have anything to, anything to say or if you have anything to ask. Well, I'm, we can't hear you, Martin. I'm not sure if there's a audio issue. Maybe he's falling asleep after his shift. <laughs> <laughs> he's, been, uh, he's been hard at it. Wait, oh, he's left. Oh, no. Uh, we... that... I think we might see him back. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah we can hear you. There you go, mate. I think my internet cut out. I, I heard what you said, Jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, like I... I, like it's not a question. It's more of like a praise for XW6. I noticed something apart from the consistency that they, they really do have. I think the passion is also there, and the passion is clear for everybody. To see. And they just have fun doing it. There, I I told Jam that the reason why I even one of the reasons why I followed him was the Black Panther. <laughs> you remember I said the Black Panther? Oh yeah. Behind you, yeah. That was one of the reasons. But one of the reasons I was another reason why I followed you was because the passion was there. Like, mm-hmm. I could just see that this guy loves Chelsea. I saw the same thing with Elizabeth. I saw the same thing with, um, I don't know the lady's name. I think her name is Maria, the one from Lebanon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think her, and then I saw Dummy also. I love Dummy's video. Dummy and Matisse when they uh, yeah. collaborate. It's, it's, just, it's just fantastic. So I just saw the passion, and the passion is there. And you guys don't do banter. I, what I hate the most about Chelsea Twitter is the unnecessary banter and the bait and the back and forth you guys are just playing to what is what um chelsea related and talk about chelsea you don't make banter you respect other teams and that's what i've got I've, I've, I've like um grown to love about xw6 and i hope we also do the same thing here it's, i think we all love talking about chelsea so the fun itself and the passion itself will speak um to the fans and when they see it i i know definitely we'll, we'll grow as well when we grow We'll do more. We'll have more collaboration. <laughs> well put, man. Well put. I think just to end it all, I'd like to give you guys a shout out. Like SW6, you've you've done wonders for me. You've, I mean, it's it's been incredible working with everyone on the team. Um, and then this guy goes out to every single person, um, writers, um, people who I haven't worked with yet, or, or just have an interaction with. You know, you guys are a team of amazing people. I've worked with quite a few of Chelsea um, Chelsea channels or Chelsea social media um, mm-hmm. 
associated accounts, but you know, I've got to say, I think I have. I was having a conversation about this um, with Alex and Lamar a few days ago um, off camera. Uh, but you guys have to be the be far, by far the best. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of pe a lot of people out there who want to make it to the top level. Just forget about everyone, and, and they, as I would not say um, anything about who it is and what. what what they do, but eventually they create this little gap between them and you, even if you're the reason they're putting out content or their con the content's coming out. But with SW6, the credit, the, the organization, the, uh, the praise, the, the, you know, the, the arguments, not, not, not the, the arguments, the, but the, including the interactions, the way they interact with their fans. Also, you know, right? yeah, if you have, if you have one follower or a or, or hundred thousand followers, they'll still reply to you and and the best part you know I, I love the fact that if I if I put out a graphic um on the group chat there will there will be 10 people who would say I like this but you could do this you could do that you know that criticism just makes everything perfect no it's absolutely incredible what you guys are doing um no it's good to hear I'm really glad to hear that I mean um, yeah that I, I, I don't think I actually really mentioned that which is a bit criminal of me um but yeah, the, the the passion and the camaraderie is the word. Um, is is top notch. You know, I've been in loads of sort of team situations, team sports, whatever it is, and there's a, a lot of teamwork, uh, a lot of emphasis on teamwork in that group. So I think that's what gets them ticking. Um, you know, all the SW6 people, um, and it gets me going as well. You're, you're right. It's, it's it's top work there. I think, uh, Jam, if you have anything to plug, I think you can plug it now. Maybe your socials or anything. Yeah. Um, well, uh, my own uh, Twitter profile is uh, carefree underscore jam. So uh, feel free to follow me if you just want some nonsense banter. Sometimes you just want a cheap laugh. That's what I'm there for. <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, certainly give SW6 Daily a follow. Um, you know, edits, podcasts, video content, compilations, articles. We've got the lot. Um, it, it does come from the heart. And, you know, we're, we're almost at 10,000 followers. So I'd really appreciate, you know, um, giving us a follow and joining in and interacting. Easy work, easy work. You'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, tr we're trying to get there before Monday. But, you know, we'll see. It'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's going to be the end of the podcast. Great discussion with uh, Jam and everyone on this. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast, Jam. Um, we'll Thanks for having me. You, yeah, we hope to have you soon again. Um, I think that's all for this podcast. Thank you guys for listening, watching. If you're doing it on YouTube, then make sure to subscribe, leave a like, or even comment below what you think Chelsea season is going to be like and what you guys want us to talk about. Again, share the podcast on social media, add it to your story on Instagram, or tweet out about it and get a chance to be on the podcast as well. We're going to be organizing that soon. Um, I think that's all. Thank you, my Alex, again. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks, much. Boys. Yeah, cheers. Thanks so much for coming on, Jam. It's been it's been a lot of fun for sure. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. I've I've enjoyed it. Cheers, boys. Yeah.